So a very good day to one and all. I am Dr. Rohit Kopinath and today we will be discussing about small intestine or small bowel. So as we usually do, we will be discussing this topic in parts. So we will start off with the embryology of gut in general and then small bowel or mid gut in particular. So the primitive embryo can be looked at from a plate like point of view. You can consider the primitive embryo to be initially in the form of what is called as an embryogenic disc. So this embryogenic disc contains three important, all three layers, basically the ectoderm, the mesoderm and the endoderm as you can see in this picture. Now, this embryogenic disc then undergoes a lateral folding. So this lateral folding results in the tubularization of all three structures, the endoderm, the ectoderm and the mesoderm. So this tubularized endoderm forms the primitive gut. Now, to elaborate on the derivatives of the gut as such, I said earlier that the gut is of endodermal origin. To be more specific, the epithelial lining of the gut is of endodermal origin, whereas the submucosa, the muscular wall, the blood vessels and the peritoneum covering it are all of mesodermal origin. In fact, the gut contains a lot of ectodermal origin cells as well. So you know that the gut has a lot of entric nerve plexus within it. You have the myentric and the mesonerve plexus. So these are of ectodermal origin. To be more specific, they arise from the neural crest cells. Now, so once the primitive gut is formed, it tends to differentiate itself into a foregut, midgut and a hindgut. Now, today we'll be discussing about the midgut in particular. So the midgut itself gives rise to part of the duodenum below the ampulla of vater, jejunum, the ileum, the ileocecal junction, cecum, the ascending colon and the transverse colon, basically a portion of the transverse colon that is the right part of the transverse colon, right two thirds of the transverse colon. So all these are derivatives of the midgut. Now the midgut as it forms within the peritoneal cavity, you find that it tends to come in contact with the yolk sac or this contact with the yolk sac is pretty broad initially and within the contact is the presence of a very important blood vessel called the vitelline artery. So this communication between the midgut and the yolk sac becomes narrow over a period of time resulting in the formation of what is called as the vitellointestinal duct and this duct contains the vitelline artery. One important change you would notice compared to this picture is that the vitelline artery starts giving off branches to the developing midgut. Subsequently, what happens is that the vitellointestinal duct completely obliterates, isolating the midgut from the yolk sac or the yolk sac remnant specific. So, the developing midgut subsequently undergoes the process of elongation, rotation, and fixation. Now, it is to be remembered that elongation of the midgut is not possible within the developing embryo because of space constraints. The peritoneal cavity or the abdominal cavity of the developing embryo is not, there is not enough space for the elongation to occur. So there exists a process of physiological herniation. The midgut herniates through the umbilicus into the extraembryonic coelom. So this herniation occurs by around the fourth to sixth week of gestation. So once the herniation occurs, it then undergoes a process of rotation, elongation and then returns back followed by fixation. So the herniation is in such a way that the bubble herniates in a vertical plane. So it herniates in a vertical plane. So imagine that this particular hand here represents the loop of bubble which is coming out. So it herniates in an end on manner wherein it has an upper end and an inferior limb. So it has a superior limb here and an inferior limb. So this superior limb is called as the pre-arterial segment. So why is it called the pre-arterial segment? Because the herniated midgut, the loop is, is based on the superior mesenteric artery. The superior mesenteric artery comes out along with the midgut so that it undergoes a rotation. So the segment of gut which is located above the superior mesenteric artery is called as the pre-arterial segment. Whereas the segment of the gut located below the superior mesenteric artery is called as the post arterial segment. So now this pre arterial and post arterial segments are it's of great importance to know it and to differentiate between these two because the components of bubble which are arising from the pre arterial and the post arterial segments is very necessary that we know about it. 
the pre arterial segment gives rise to the duodenum second part from the ampulla of vater downwards the jejunum the ileum up till the terminal ileum from the terminal ileum the cecum appendix ascending colon and the right two thirds of the transverse colon arise from the post arterial segment so this pre arterial and post arterial segment what happens subsequently is that it undergoes a rotation so it undergoes a rotation of 90 degrees in the anti clockwise direction so this rotation in the anti clockwise direction by around 90 degrees makes the pre arterial segment which is located which was until now located above the superior mesenteric artery it comes to lie on the right of the superior mesenteric artery whereas the post arterial segment which was below the superior mesenteric artery it comes to lie on the left of the superior mesenteric artery so now the bowel itself or the midgut itself is located in the transverse plane so what was initially vertical is now become transverse so once it comes to the transverse plane the pre arterial segment starts elongating so this is important because the pre arterial segment is the one which gives rise to the predominant portion of the small bowel so elongation of the pre arterial segment starts so this elongated pre arterial segment subsequently after adequate elongation it enters back into the peritoneal cavity as the pre arterial segment enters back into the peritoneal cavity it undergoes a further rotation of 90 degrees in the anti clockwise direction so as the pre arterial segment after proper elongation it enters into the peritoneal cavity like i said it undergoes a rotation in the anti clockwise direction by around 90 degrees so this pre arterial segment as it enters into the peritoneal cavity it goes behind the superior mesenteric artery and as it goes into the peritoneal cavity it tends to occupy a position on the upper left corner of the peritoneal cavity this is the reason why the dj flexure is located on the left of the spine and the initial jejunal loops are all located on the left hand side of the abdomen so once the pre arterial segment goes inside then the post arterial segment enters into the peritoneal cavity now the post arterial segment enters into the peritoneal cavity above the superior mesenteric artery and similar to the pre arterial segment even the post arterial segment undergoes a rotation of 90 degrees in the anti clockwise direction so the post arterial segment again enters into the peritoneal cavity anterior to the superior mesenteric artery and it tends to occupy a position on the right side of the abdomen in fact embryologically the cecum once it enters into the peritoneal cavity is located on the right hand side of the abdomen and then at this point you should remember that once it the as the post arterial segment enters into the peritoneal cavity there is no differentiation of from a cecum and an ascending colon so the ascending colon is still not developed once it enters into the peritoneal cavity and occupies a subhepatic position the cecum drops down to give rise to the ascending colon so this is how rotation occurs and elongation of of midgut occurs so in short we can say that the gut mid gut undergoes a total rotation of 270 degrees 90 90 90 270 90 degrees in the anti clockwise direction so this is an important point and it has to be remembered because there are errors which can occur in this process of herniation elongation and rotation so they can have errors in it and that can result in several conditions which will be discussed